and welcome back this is the clay golem back with our foundry vtt series um i've got stormwreck isle up here but we're not doing a stormwreck isle in this video so over the past couple of videos i've mentioned about wanting to put together some um some maps for campsite regions so that regardless of where our players decide to camp down we've got a map that we can bring out for that um, and i did a previous video looking at incarnate to make a couple of maps um, so I've had a little play with those so this video that's what I want to do I'm going to create some scenes for campsites and put some assets on and we're going to be looking at using tiles as part of foundry we've not looked at tiles before so uh, it's going to be painful for you guys to watch me blundering around as usual but if you're still watching these videos you're <laughs> you're well used to that okay so I'm going to create a new folder for my scenes here uh, and I'm going to call this uh, campsites. Okay, so it's going to be a total a folder that stands completely on its own. Um, I've left it default black. I could change the color, of course, and do whatever I wanted there. Um, yeah, no, let's leave it black, whatever. Okay, so let's close that one. So in our campsite folder, I'm going to do a click up here to do a new scene. Uh, and let's do, um, let's call this one, no, we're going to call it Woodland Cave. Okay, and we're going to put it in that folder, Campsites. Brilliant, bring that up. Um, Woodland Cave, showing navigation. No, I don't want it shown in there. I'm going to pull it in when we need to. I need my background image. Okay, so uh, I'm, let's go into my Maps folder. I'm going to choose file and I don't want that one. I want to come into this folder called maps and here's one that I created. So you can see I've got four here ready to kind of go. Okay, so let's select that one, bring that in. Um, what else do we need to do? Let's save changes first and then let's activate it so you can see. So it's just one that I threw together in Incarnate. Um, as you know, I am not the best, but this is just for camping, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, straight away we can see we've got a couple of issues here so right click configure again um, uh, let's look at changing our grid so if we change that to 50 yes please that's going to align our grid much better already um, let's do a little grid tool thing that we can do yeah we've been here before haven't we uh, and hopefully if I'm a smarty pants it's not going to line up. <laughs> okay, so I'm lined up over here on this right side, but we can see that the image in the background um, is needs to go uh, needs to be smaller. So I'm going to scale down. So I'm holding Shift and using the mouse wheel to scale that down slightly. Yeah, it doesn't need too much doing to it, which is good. 0.98 might be enough. That's pretty much perfect. Just check down here. Touch more. Yep, for this map, I'm going to say that is just perfect what we need. So I'm going to save that. Um, I'm going to make our grid uh, completely um, no, not opaque at all. That's the one. Completely transparent. So we've only got the grid that's drawn on the map. Um, and if you watch the map making video, as painful as that was, um, you'll recall that I dimmed the grid down so it's not quite so intrusive, but we can still see it. Okay, what about lighting? Uh, do I want global illumination for here? No, I don't, because that's all in a cave. I want that to be dark. So we're going to leave that as it is. Um, ambience, I don't, not going to want anything in here either, weather effects, etc. Okay, so let's save that. Now just bear in mind that, uh, let's select what, grab one of our actors, good old Haley. we're always using Haley. We can dump Haley on here and if we select Haley, everything is dark, okay, which is fine. That's kind of what we want. So we do need to put in a light source. So we can shove that in there. Um, and we can just leave that as is. So if we go back and select Haley, she can see stuff. Uh, now we want this cave to be dark, so um, we will need to make this radius uh, a fair bit smaller. 
bring it down to 90. Okay, that's fine there. And because it's a cave for this one, I want to put some walls in. I'm not going to do that for most of the most of these type of maps, but for this one I do because I want to make sure that the whoops hold have I forgotten how to do walls? No, I've remembered how to do walls. Not that difficult. So I'm just holding down control, whizzing around with these walls here. And this is mostly to stop the light from bleeding all over the place. Um, in theory, it's a campsite. Sometimes there might be encounters, um, but often there won't be. So it's not really too vital for this one. But I do want to do some real basic stuff. Okay, now we've got this cliff wall along here. So I'm going to do one. We don't want to do that. Um, let's do another wall in here somewhere. And just close that off by drawing that up to there. Okay, so now when we select Haley, we should have a much better idea and she walks into here and that should be dark now the lights only reaching this bit um, this is revealed because of fog of war so if we go back to our light reset our fog of war reselect Haley. there we go that's as much as Haley can see okay now the lights a little bit weird because it's it's kind of shining from a strange place so I might move that over there but I might also move uh, a version of it over here. Although I'm going to reduce that down to about 50. 50 there. Move that up a little bit. I want to be able to illuminate the front of that cave. In fact, actually, I could just use the one light source that might be better let's just use the one light source there let's reduce that down to about 80 okay so let's quickly check make sure we're happy with our light source reset that fog of war okay so yeah you can you can kind of see into the cave entrance but not an awful lot else that's fine Move that round slightly. There we go. So I just want to make sure it's getting all the walls. I'm going to bring that back slightly. 75. Oh, I might even bring it back to 70. Oh, that's why. Right. There we go. So I think that's good. Fog of war. Sort that out. Bit of faffing. All right. So this kind of scene is is sort of done. Um, all I'm going to do is when they come to here, or they say they're going to rest, you know, they're in the woods, they find a cave, they might deliberately look for somewhere good to camp. Um, and a cave is an option. We could do that. We could put a minor encounter in there. We can, you know, we can use this same map. We can populate it with um, bears or owl bears or, or something like that to make it a little bit more interesting. But what we do expect them to do is to use this as a campsite so what we need to do is to put some campsite kits down. So this is where we're going to play with tiles for this one. So if I go to our tile controls at the top here, on the top left, we can select a tile. We haven't got any. We can place a tile. We can browse tiles. Um, or we can uh, the foreground layer thing. Okay, so uh, I've uploaded a couple because I was playing with them. I uh, just wanted to make sure I had the very, very basic. So let's let's do a completely new tile. So I'm on place tile and I can just draw. Uh, and now it's going to ask me to select, well, there's obviously some op different options here, but I need to select my image. So if I go to my images, um, I'm going to choose a new file. I'm just checking what ones I haven't done, not in my maps. But in my characters, I dump them in. I've got these folders here with these different bits and bobs. 
Um, I brought in a couple of campfires, uh, an empty cart, some tents and some bed rolls. Um, but I don't think I brought in this one yet, tent two. So I'm going to open that. Choose select file, that's the one I want to use. Uh, and do create. There it is, there's my tent. Now obviously you can scale all of these uh, and we need to be a little bit conscious about how big these are. So if it's a one person tent, is that the right size for it? Uh, bear in mind these are five by five, so one person probably takes up that much room. So a tent, probably that. If it's a two person tent, you could easily leave it at that size. So that's one of our tiles. Now, because we've created that tile, if over here on the left, if I go to browse tiles, it brings up this, which shows all the different tiles that we've already created. I'm not 100% sure why my maps are created as tiles. That certainly wasn't intentional, but you can see that's brought that in as well. Um, so that's the empty cave map. That's a bit weird. It is what it is. Um, but I can drag in my, I'll make sure I get the correct one, uh, this campfire. That's quite a huge campfire. That's a 10 foot by 10 foot campfire. It's enormous. But we can reduce that down to five foot by five foot. Now I know what you may be thinking already is like, blimey, this is fiddly to do on the fly, isn't it? Uh, and it is, yeah. And we can drop these other things in here as well. These bed rolls, these enormous gravy <laughs> bed rolls. <laughs> ah dear, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, but we can resize all these now. So I would say normal bed rolls, five foot by 10 foot makes sense that that's the size that they would take up for normal characters. So we can resize these all now. That's a very long skinny person. Um, we can resize the tents. Uh, I can bring in the other tent. Now the chances are they ain't gonna put a tent up indoors. Um, that doesn't make an awful lot of sense. Um, they may also not um, do you know what, making that campfire a bit bigger, because of the size of the image 5x5, five five, I think that's reasonable to make it take up that space. These tiles can overlap. So if you can see, this tile is within that one. So it's not a major problem. Uh, let's just grab Haley for a second. Where are you, dear? You're not going to be able to see because it's dark. Right click, put her torch on. That's handy. OK, so we can come and explore the cave. Um, we can put her in the tent, we can put her on a sleeping bag, we can make a dance in the fire and all those things. Okay, so the tiles are not um, not interrupting where we can move, which is useful. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this instance, so what I said is I, I could set this up and go, oh yeah, 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 no, you're all camped, uh, there you are, ready to go. Um, but that's not very realistic. Get back to my select tiles. Um, also, are these going to be all lined up? Probably not. If I double if I double right click on any of these tiles, I can change their coordinates and their dimensions and things. It's easier to drag them than it is to do that. Um, I can also scale them and things like that. But here I can rotate. So if I rotate that by 45 degrees, I've now got that one there. Uh, let's do this one by 78 degrees. That one's now that way. Let's do this by 129 degrees. So I can put out a whole bunch of these and it doesn't matter if I have the same tile out more than once. Let's just make sure that is a good size. Um, that one could be 90 degrees. Put another one of these out. I don't know why that one's so humongous. It's quite ridiculous. Um, we can put this one out at uh, seven, 78 degrees. Another one pretty much aligned with that one that's fine put another one of these out so we can chuck a whole bunch of these out now the chances are that we're not going to have this many um, we're not gonna I wasn't expecting it to do that we go we need a couple facing south and you're thinking how big is my party why why are you doing this well I want to kind of give options um, for later and I'm going to do something with this in a second um, uh, 260 let's say yep so we've got one face in the other way at least let's drop one more out and face it the other way as well 
and this is just about doing a little bit of over prep so that so that when we actually come to running this we can just chuck stuff out we haven't got to think about it i don't want to be rotating stuff working out oh which direction do you want to face it and all of that nonsense while people are actually playing so i'm going to close that tab i don't need that anymore but uh, i believe so something i want to check so with this one selected if i do Control c Control v it gives me another one there we go so actually if they want to line their sleeping bags up oops ah, get that one out of the way if they want to line their sleeping bags up actually i can, can just Control c Control v Uh, and I can put them down. Oh, it's, I see it's snapping to grid, so that's that's why it's not lining up perfectly. Um, but there we go. Yeah, Control C, Control V, if you want to duplicate them. But what I'm going to do with these, are they're unlikely to use their tents if they've got tents uh, inside the cave. But I can line all these tiles up over here. Including that. So when my character Haley is here and she explores this cave, you know, because they might say, oh yeah, look, let's camp far away from the entrance as possible, you know, so there's no escape route if something comes into the cave. They can decide where they want to put their stuff. And all I need to do is to grab that and chuck their sleeping bags. Where are you putting your sleeping bag? They can go, oh, right, well, Haley said, oh, I'm going to put mine right where I'm standing now. Right, brilliant, no problem. There's your sleeping bag, Haley. Job done. Now, or, or she says, oh, I'm going to have mine down near the door. What about there? It's like, yep. Yeah. Maybe over a bit more. Uh, she might say, oh, I'll have it against the wall. Okay, fine. That's where you're going to have your sleeping bag up against the wall. That's where you're going to be sitting on guard. And let's face it, it's always going to be the elf who only needs to sleep four hours a night. <laughs> He's going to get a majority of the guard duty. Uh, and then they might say, actually, we're, we're going to we're going to put the campfire on this mound. It's a bit drier up here. The rest of the cave is a bit damp, so we're going to put the fire itself up here, which is great. Now, what I would like to do, so that's kind of done, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a nice way of doing it. And of course, if you know your guys, your your party have different assets and things, um, you might need to add different things. So my current party they don't have tents they only have bed rolls because most people forget that tents are a nice way to do things um so i wouldn't need the tent ones but i'm whoops a daisy i'm including them on here for uh, for those purposes um but when they have in this cave which is dark they may well want to um put that campfire on Okay, so what we can do again is we can prep this campfire light knowing that they are going to more than likely uh, use a campfire. So we're going to say it's lit to 40 to 20. Okay, so in this dark cave um, it's going to be reasonably brightly lit if they're right near that fire. In fact, we might say that it's more like 1030. Uh, I suspect there's actually something in the manual that tells you what that should be. Um, you're the dm you do what you like okay what about light animation yeah we kind of um we know we've got flickering light but that's not necessarily what we want well, let's change this color of this light um let's make it kind of orangey if we can okay and then we're just going to play with these animations so using that flicker light if i make it faster kind of works doesn't it it's not it's not perfect not by any means so um duh, 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 just having a look down see torch is a pretty good one we've used before so we can put that there not sure i'm happy with that color A slightly lighter yellow so we could do that and of course we could layer you know another color on top of it if we wanted to i think the orange is a bit better actually <laughs> okay 
So again, just popping back to Haley. Wherever she is, we've got that campfire light. It doesn't have to be perfect, of course it doesn't, but it does give a nice representation. And of course, we can just leave that. We can just leave that off. Um, we can pop it over there. Wherever they decide to put their campfire, we can just go and slap that on. Now, what would be nice, and I have no idea if this is possible, would be to, uh, if we go back to our tiles and select the tile, if I double click this, we have animation, if it was an animated tile. Uh, we have whether it's overhead, so you know something that they can walk under. Uh, and we've got basics. What we don't appear to have here is um, any way to attach this light to that tile. That'd be quite nice so that we could move that with us. Um, but in the interim, I think this is a perfectly acceptable solution. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave that there because it doesn't matter. Go back to my tiles. Oops, select this, drag this tile off of here and that off of here. Okay, so again, party can actually come in and explore this cave and then decide to camp down. And it may well be that they, you know, they use this cave after emptying it. I can shove monsters in there, whatever I want to do. Um, and I can use this for a random encounter. Um, you know, whatever I want to do, I've now got this. But I've got it under my camp, um, my camp scenes. So let's look at another one, add another scene here. Um, Woodland Path, I think, was one of them. So again, don't want it on the navigation. I want to select my my maps under maps here. Choose file, not under there, under my maps. Um, so I've got this Woodland Path one. Let's activate that. So this is not one that I drew, this is one that I found and just Googled. So as I say, you don't have to spend ages doing this stuff yourself. You can sometimes just find ones. Just be careful of uh, you know, usage rights and stuff like that. Don't, uh, don't take the mick out of people. Right, uh, grid size. Okay, let's put it back to 50. I don't think it saved it last time. Okay. Which will be me, not it. Okay, so let's see if we can line these grids up. So our background image is much smaller than our grid, so we're going to have to bring that up considerably. I've still got a fair bit to go, so I'm going to go with 1.3 in the background image scale, see how that works for us. Not too far off. I'm lining up down here at the moment. So we can see this image needs to be bigger still. So scale up that image. We're not too far off. A little bit more. Uh, so we're lined up this way, a little bit more then. Let's go to 3.9. That's looking pretty good. So we're lined up down here and we're lined up up there. I'm going to say that's good enough. Bosch job done. Uh, now lighting for this global illumination. Let's use global illumination because this one is outside. And what that means, of course, again, let's take one of our actors. And oh, Haley's always getting volunteered for this stuff. So we can shove Haley out here. Um, and if we select her, she can see everything because of global illumination. Now, remember, if it's camping, it might be nighttime. So we can just fade down the actual lighting here and make it much darker. Much, 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 much darker. OK, so we can do that. And I think that's absolutely fine for these purposes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we just bring that light level up. Now, one thing I did forget to do when we're looking at this, when I go to configure on that grid, I want to make our grid, the foundry grid, um, more transparent to get rid of it. 
So basics, happy with that. Grid, lighting, absolutely fine. Do I want ambiance, weather effects? Um, I could put autumn leaves, but I'm going to leave those off. Now, of course, you can change those on the fly. Depending what time of year they arrive, you might go, you know what, it's raining. Just come and shove it on. You can do that, especially if they're camping, make their life a nightmare. <laughs> I love you for it, honest. Okay, so easy peasy. They're just going to camp at the side of the road or something like that. Now we've got our tile assets. So if I just go to the tile browser and bring this up, I can just dump these things straight in. Now obviously, we've got this issue of them being massive again. I'm not sure if there is a way. And if you know, please, please share with us um, how we can change the default size of these. Because I'm not sure why these are are all different sizes. Um, but we can shove these out. Now I'm not going to drag more out because these are already the right size. I can go copy and paste. As we saw, I can paste a whole bunch of these out themselves. Now, do I want these to be visible when they uh, when they turn up? I don't. How do I make these tiles invisible? I suspect there's a really easy way. Right, I'm going to chuck out that cart. Holy heck, why is that so big? <laughs> Let's make that cart a bit, uh, a bit more realistic size-wise. So if you know your party has a cart, brilliant, have a cart. So ah, uh, yeah, I can hide those tokens, that's easy. So with this one, uh, I want to change its rotation to 90 degrees. Um, depends which way they're heading, of course. But if they've got a heart cart, I can do that. Uh, maybe, let's choose a file, let's add another one on here from these, uh, did I put in characters? I did. I thought I had a... I did. I got what a horse and did that just do something? Dear Lord, why is that so big? How do I? How? Why? Why? <laughs> wow. Okay. So. Oh, as I'm looking at this pixel size, grid asset size, that, oh, that's much closer. Sorry, I got distracted again. That happens a lot, doesn't it? Uh, I have no idea why this my horse and cart one is so huge, but there we go. So I've got a horse and cart here, um, about five foot wide. That makes sense. Yep. So again, I can have that ready to go. I could have my tents ready to go if I'm happy with the sizing of those. On the assumption that uh, your party has tents, uh, put all of those out and I can put out my campfire as well, ready to go. Now, as we saw, I can right click and just hide these. So left, left click on the, right, left click to select the tile, right click to bring up the menu, left click to hide it. But I'm wondering, can I hold down shift and as long as I'm accurate, right, okay, that's useful, isn't it? So hold down shift, I can indeed just select multiple tiles and hide them all. So now if we pop back to our dear Haley, when she's on here, she's not going to see any of those tiles that are just hidden away up there. Um, away from the party, not intrusive. Again, this map can be used for a random encounter. Um, they may decide to just stop in the middle of the road um, and camp there. Uh, anything else we need to do? No. Could we put some sounds on? Yes. In fact, that's one thing we didn't do for the other one was we didn't put on the, the sounds of the um, um, of the campfire. We could do that. Crackling campfire sounds to go with the light. I've not done the light for the campfire. You've just watched me do... Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. For just for this one. Let's do it. Let's put on a new thing. This is going to be our campfire light. Um, we say like 10 and then 30 for dim. We can do that. Um, colour. We want to select a kind of an orangey colour, I think. 
light animation let's go with that torch let's put it up really fast so that's our campfire excellent which we can turn off and turn on um, let's put on now I don't think I've got a crackling campfire sound I don't think we've used one of those have we so I'm gonna go and find one I've got beach way oh campfire crackling I have oh okay well let's hope it's a good one <laughs> Volume easing, yes. Constrained by walls, kind of irrelevant, but let's leave that on. Um, darkness activation range, no, we're going to manually do that. Okay, so we can have our firelight, which seems very, very intense, um, and we can have that. Let's go drop to Haley. Not sure if you can hear that. Sounds quite quiet, but that might be just the volume I've got my speakers. Right, so this light here, what I'm going to do with this is uh, turn down the intent color intensity a bit, because that did seem a bit full on. We want the light, but not to, not to go nuts here. Okay, so if our light is there, um, and we can put our sound there, how does it look when we've got our campfire tile under there so going back pop back to Haley. is that working for us I think it does you can see it's the campfire yep yeah I think that works doesn't it let's make it night time so bringing down the the general light levels go back to Haley. over here it's quite dark But then we can move into the firelight much better. Okay, happy with that. Good, good, good. All right. So that's the next one done. So this is this is all we're doing. These are quite quick and easy to set up. These ones I've actually done. Um, uh, hang on. The cave one was probably the the hardest one because it's the first one we did and we had walls, um, which we don't generally need for these. Uh, let's not be in shipwreck aisle we want to be in the DM folder maps choose file I want to come back out and go in my uh, in my maps folder um, so this is the this is the clearing in the let's close that for a second Act, activate it Ta -da. oh did I not select the map stupid boy um, forest clearing select file oh what's happened there oh there it is okay <laughs> so this is one you saw me make using um incarnate uh, so this is this is the map that i threw together and actually looks pretty good once we bring it to foundry uh i'm quite impressed with my own skills if i do say so myself um, we do need to align this grid, of course. Always need to align that grid. Um, now, because it's a bit busy, let's make that grid color red. Yep, that's not so bad. Um, but let's use our grid align tool, which we know and love so much. Which is great, and we need to bring up the size of the background image. Let's try a 1.3. Is that going to fit? Almost. Almost. Background image needs to be uh, slightly smaller. Slightly smaller. That looks pretty good. Yep. That will do very nicely so save changes yes please don't mess with it brilliant okay good uh, and then we're just going to repeat what we did before 
okay so uh, nice and easy uh, lighting oh hang on grid I want to make that transparent so we get rid of our red grid uh, that's all good lighting wise do we want this to be global illumination we can say yes yeah don't mind it on this one we can darken it using other things token vision yes I'm gonna do that uh, ambience nope uh, we're gonna go to our tiles we're going to place tiles oh, sorry I'm gonna go to my tile selector and then I'm going to drag now you notice on the last map and on this map I'm not bothering to turn these okay I might do it later on when when I know my when my party have kind of established what their kit is and how many of them there are and all of that stuff then I might do that um, but for the sake of um, expedience with this I'm not going to bother copy paste paste there we go we got a bunch of these in fact actually if I select all of Hang on, hang on, don't do that. Let's get rid of this. If I select all of these, okay, can't just drag and select, but I can hold down shift and do all of those. I'm going to hide all of those and drag them all somewhere out of the way. Uh, let's stick them down here in the woods. Okay, so this is ready to go, except for I want my light source. Blimey, what did we say? Uh, 10 and 30, I think it was. Change our color. Then do that. Turn the intensity down slightly. Uh, light animation. We were using torch because it's just very convenient. Animation speed, put that up. Ah, oh, didn't update that. <laughs> Stupid boy. Okay. We wanted bright was out to uh, 10 and 30. Update light source. Thank you very much. We didn't change the color. Okay, we've got our fire. We can put our sound in. Find that again. Not in maps. I think it was shipwreck aisle sounds and we had campfire crackling. Select that one. And it's got about activating between darkness, which is kind of nice. I just don't think we need to worry about it for this. Uh, create that ambient sound, and that should be good. Okay, so we can turn off the light, turn off the campfire. So can you see what I mean? It'd be really, really useful, and there may be a way. I have no idea if there is or how. Um, if you do know a way, and it might be that there's an add-on that helps do this, but it'd be really nice to go campfire, activate campfire. It turns on the sound, it turns on the light. Um, and just being able to activate that tile. Now, I know there are add-ons that do special things with tiles, which is great. We've not looked at those yet. This is our first look at tiles today. Um, but we can already see how they're kind of useful, and we can just chuck those assets around as part of this camp. All right, this has gone on long enough. Uh, I have no idea if this has been really dull and boring for you to watch, kind of going, this is really basic, or if uh, this is new to you like it is to me. Uh, but thank you very much. Don't forget to leave a like on this video. Drop a comment in, let me know what you think. And if you're not already subscribed, please do that. It really does encourage me to keep on doing this um, and to push in the boundaries, doing more and more, um, and potentially providing more assets and stuff for you guys. Thanks. Take care.